Então, o compêndio da Lexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração. Você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é a Lexio Divina? A Lexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita, no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E o último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Hello everyone, happy Sunday! I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the World Community and I would like to welcome all of you there joining us in this 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, today September 5th. And for the readings of this Sunday we read Prophet Isaiah chapter 35 verse 4 to 7, Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 146, 146, second reading from the letter of James chapter 2 verses 1 to 5, And the Gospel is from St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 31 to 37. Let's start with the reading of the Word of God for this Sunday. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible rec recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. The water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirst ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Prophecy of Isaiah. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. Isaiah is known as the prophet of the Messiah. Why? Because he prophesied that the Messiah would be the one they, that would uh, heal the blind, the lame, the deaf, the mute. Prophet Isaiah gave us so many prophecies saying how the work of the Messiah would be. And today in this passage he says, say to those who are fearful, who are of a fearful heart. Do you know someone of a fearful heart? Do you know someone that has a fearful heart? I do many, I do know many, and many times I have a fearful heart. Many times I, I can't see the future, I can't see things properly, and I become full of fear. And prophet Isaiah says, says to those that you know, be strong, do not fear, he is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. What a consolation to say to someone with a fearful heart. He will come and save you. Don't worry. He will come and save you. 
Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 146 says, It is the Lord who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous and watches over the strangers. The Lord upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Your God, O Zion, will reign from generation to generation. Second reading from the letter of St. James, it says, My brothers and sisters, do with do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious lord jesus christ for if a person with a gold ring and a fine clothes comes into your assembly and if a poor person in dirty clothes also come in and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say have a seat here please well to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at, my, sit at my feet. Have you not made distinction among yourselves and become judged with evil thoughts? Listen, listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom and he ha that he has promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom? St. James, he, he strikes to the heart. He goes direct to the point, to the right point. What did God do on earth? He did not choose the rich, the wealth, and the and the the person full of of beings on this earth full of things on this earth full of means no the lord chose the poor the blame the blind the wicked the lord chose those who had no favoritism no prestige the lord chose the poorest of the poor and he made his servant jesus christ his son to be poor just like us to be poor with each one of us so how are you choosing with favoritism uh, rich people with a uh, nice clothes and nice rings and nice stuff and nice house nice uh, nice car how are you choosing those people instead of choosing the poor that the lord chose to give his kingdom the kingdom of heaven is of the poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to the poor. So let us be poor. Maybe we have a financial means. We can afford a lot of things. But let us be poor in our heart as the Beatitudes teach us. Blessed is the poor in heart for they, for they will receive everything they need from the Lord. Blessed be the poor in heart. The Gospel from St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 31 to 37 says, Returning from the region of Tyre, Jesus went by way of, of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee and the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a man who were deaf and who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. Jesus took him aside in private, in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he signed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more jealous, zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, 
He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The first reading on Sunday are always meant to match with the Gospel. First reading, Prophet Isaiah chapter 35, we see that the Lord says that the deaf will hear. The deaf will hear. And what does Jesus do in the Gospel? He cures. He heals a deaf man. They brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech. So a deaf man that couldn't listen, also, although he couldn't speak. So And Jesus had a miracle. Jesus took him in private. Jesus didn't do anything before the crowds as a spectacle for everyone to see. Jesus took him aside in private and cured him and said, be opened. And we can apply this be open to us too. In places where we are close to God, where we have close hearts, close minds. We don't want to listen, to hear, to see. Be open, be open. The Lord wants us to be open to Him on this Sunday, to be open to His grace, to be open to His word, to be open to Him. Ephatha, to each one of us. Ephatha, be open. Be open. He has done everything well. Christ Jesus did everything well. He continued doing everything well. That's why He wants to open us up. Open our minds, open our hearts, open our ears, open our mouth to proclaim Him. So may in this Sunday we be able to proclaim our Lord and King. Amen.